What's up guys, uh, dish bringers coming up quick. We are just gonna be going through a few uh, sled details. You know, there's a lot of questions. We're getting a bunch of emails and stuff on which models, which sleds, you know, and then I think there's a bunch of questions too about what is the track gonna be like, what's the sled gonna be used for, um, and so on. So, gonna be going over a few details on the sled, things that are probably the most important, some things that to probably skip on, and uh, yeah, and then just things for when you're out buying sleds, what to look for. When you go in to look at a sled, even before you get there and you're looking online, there's a few areas that can really tell you how beat up the sled was. Things like the seat and you know the windshield, they're gonna be torn up. They're gonna be ripped. These almost all these dish bangers we've bought and have had bad windshields and bad seats. And it doesn't always mean the sled was beat on, it could just mean it spent most of its life outside in the off season, which is part of the deal. You're not gonna find 1990s snowmobiles that get parked inside like princesses all year round. One thing that you can't hide and that weather doesn't affect is the running boards. So right here, if your running boards are clapped out, if they're all hanging down or if they're bent out, if there's cracks in a lot of the little aluminum pieces, like if you have a, a painted tunnel and the paint is completely worn off in this area, it's a pretty good indication that that thing's been hammered on. You know, skid bolts, if those holes are really augered out, that's a really hard fix. You know, you can plate it and whatever, but if you can go buy a sled that doesn't have that stuff all beat up, you're gonna be able to spend your time on things like, you know, putting skis and handlebars on it, rather than getting the thing to where it's gonna finish the race. That's the biggest priority. It doesn't matter how many triple pipes you got on it or big bore, whatever. It doesn't matter if it doesn't finish the race. In, in any of that, the running boards is a pretty good telltale sign. If the running boards are clapped, it's got a lot of miles on it. It's got a lot of time and it was ridden hard. This sled in particular was an old guy, Northern Minnesota, it was his wife's sled. I typically like to look for guys like that. You know, you put your mom on a sled, she's just gonna go take it easy. She might hit a tree, but she's not gonna be launching ditches and you know, whatever. There are a few. Don't go buy one from uh, Malin Katu. <laughs> but you know, most women you can uh, assume are not gonna be launching it. The other thing is just in the engine bay, you can go in here, if the bolts are rusted and looks like a socket has never seen that bolt, there's a pretty good chance that it's never been apart, um, which with a sled that's 40, 30, 20 years old, that's a big deal. Oil tanks, you can tell if they've been um, cleaned. It out. There's just a lot of things in here. You're gonna have stuff like the exhaust get blown out just with miles on these sleds. That's one of the first things that rusts out is the exhaust. You know, a lot of the little wear rings in there, if you grab the pipe and it doesn't move, it's a pretty good sign. If you can grab the pipe and it's floppy croppy all over the place, it's gonna be a little more work in there. So your fuel lines, your coolant lines, a lot of that, they can get dry rot. You want a sled that doesn't look like it has happened. And even if you buy one with great lines on it, I would probably still put new ones on. So we got those few things that when you're out looking at a sled, you know, you want to be checking compression. You want to be opening the hood, tip the thing on its side, grab a ski up in the air, make sure the front end isn't all sloppy. I always do this. If you can grab the steering without moving the ski and it's sloppier than that, it's, I don't, it's kind of been beat on, right? That, and that doesn't mean you don't, you don't buy it, but it's gonna be more work. So at the end of the day, you wanna look at how much time do I have to work on this thing and uh, what's gonna possibly take me out of the race. Steering probably isn't gonna take you out of the race, but there's a chance and it might wear you out more. So steering, seat, skis, stuff like that. It's really important that you fit the sled and are comfortable and with you know, a 15 minute race on an old hunk of iron, doesn't sound like much, but that's a long time on a snowmobile. Um, going hard in big fluffy snow, bunch of other sleds out there, it'll wear on you. So getting yourself in a spot where you can stand up for some of the little bumps, but at the same time you're, you're comfortable and you can sit and corner and rail and the bars aren't down on your lap and they're not way up high. <laughs> you could buy a sled with clapped out running boards and sloppy steering, all this stuff, and you could still go out and win the dish banger. It's not a telltale, but the things that for sure will keep you from winning or doing well are a sled that just eats belts. If you ask the guy, when's the last time you put a belt on? If he's, oh man, I bring one with every ride and I pretty much blow one every, like there's some clutch alignment issues, there's some clutching problems. Some of that is a red flag. You maybe just want to steer clear. 
I would for sure put a new belt on your sled if you get one. Make sure you got the right belt and don't always look at the belt that's on the sled and go buy a new one of that belt. Go online, look up what belts need to go on that sled and don't cheap out on your belt. Go buy the OEM belt that the manufacturer makes and then if the one on there is good, keep that as your spare. Keep it on your sled so if you blow one on the track, you can still get off. Um, belt is big. The other one is carbs. If your carbs look nasty on the outside, they probably are nasty on the inside. A carb on these sleds is a big deal. It's not like these new Snowcrest sleds where they're all EFI and everyone starts on two poles. And um, if you have an ultrasonic cleaner, that's a great way. You know, they're not that expensive on Amazon. You can take that carb apart, put everything in there and then put it back together after you clean it. That's gonna help the thing run better. And then things like rear skid frame stuff that breaks and will lock up your, your track. A lot of these sleds need chains and a lot of these sleds have jack shaft bearings that bind up which will end up eating your clutch and eating your chain case. So if you come look over here, this sled right here had a jack shaft bearing go out. So we had to just order a brand new jack shaft because there's a groove in this one and a uh, new jack shaft and new bearing. Um, that's a big one. This, is, this was a pretty decent sled, Red Rocket. It didn't have many issues, but that's one of those things that, that can go out. And if that gets so hot, it can make your secondary clutch stick on. That's the other thing is get the right clutch puller for your sleds, pull the clutches off. Now, if those clutches don't function right, if they're clapped out, it doesn't matter how great your sled is prepped or how cool your stickers look, if those clutches aren't moving and working correctly, it's gonna be really hard to win this race. Um, it's not gonna be as fun to drive. So clutches, I would say belt, and I would say drive train. Those are the three biggest things that you need to nail so that you can finish the race. An example of the running boards that we were talking about, this is banging sled. Look from here, you can see that that running board is Taco, Taco City. But it's it's Uncle Bangin. You know, he also gets piled into the rear every race and wrecks his rear bumper. This is part of the deal. Are those running boards really, he's so tired anyway, he doesn't really stand. He just sits down. So maybe running boards aren't a priority. So a lot of this, don't take it to heart. What I'm saying, understand what you're gonna be doing and where your skill level is gonna be at. If you're like Uncle Bangin', maybe a roach coach is your style. You know, maybe you want some zip-tied Frankenstein. Maybe that just adds to your flair, right? One thing that's super important in this race, uh, the track is really loose. The snow gets super powdery and there's a lot of sleds turning it up. Um, a big thing that can really help you do better is having a good track. Having a nice inch and a quarter, or even inch and three quarter if you can fit it. Um, Tracks USA has a great chart for telling you what pitch, track, what length, all that, like which part numbers work. Another good trick is the kill switch on your bars. It needs to function for tech. You, um, you gotta have a tether too, but a good one is put a rubber band around it so that when you're out there ditch banging and you end up hitting your chest on the bars, after you get super tired, it will happen, that you don't just cut your engine off. Um, that's a good one that'll end up bugging you in the race and you could lose a few spots because of it. Another one is skis. A lot of people say you don't need, you know, good CNAs or whatever to go win. You don't. A big thing on these older sleds is if they don't have plastic skis, if you have steel skis, I would highly recommend getting a set of plastic ones. Even if they're takeoffs, you know, if your buddy bought CNAs and he had plastic skis on his sled, buy the plastic ones from him. The plastic skis are gonna be a lot better. They're gonna slide better. They have more shape in them, so you're gonna be able to turn better. I like running the XPT. That's what these are. That's what I ran in cross country. They're on CNA's site. That's my favorite ski. You can get them in whatever color. They got a bunch of cool different stuff. Go check out CNA. They're a big sponsor of the event too, so go help them out. Shocks is a big one. The hard thing is there's not a lot of guys that know about these uh, older stuff. Willie Ewing over at the Shock Shop in the uh, Becker area, he's done all of ours for all the ditch banger sleds. He does a really good job. You can go online, you can try to find some newer shocks and retrofit them on. There's always risk in that because different sleds, they take different valving and all that. Willie's done a really great job. He's never gone too far to where it's like a snow cross setup and it definitely makes a big improvement. If you go look at like the sled bangings on, that's the one thing we're doing this year on that one is taking those shocks off. A lot of the ZRs or like the little bit more aggressive trail sleds have clicker shocks on them. There's nothing wrong with those shocks. Just bring them in and get them rebuilt. 
you could go through the thing nose to tail and uh, everything is valid to get looked at. But you know, understand how much time you got and how much money you want to spend. You don't have to break the bank to go race these. That's why it's so cool. Um, so if you do a little more work on the front end, find the right sled that you don't have to go replace every part on, you'll come out ahead. So that was ditch banger sled prep in a nutshell, what to look for things uh, when you're buying sleds what to look for and, and when you have a sled what to go over. We're going to be doing more of these videos trying to make this easier for you guys. There's a lot of things to learn um, but it's also not that intimidating. There's a ton of these sleds out there. There's a ton of parts available and there's a lot of people that know how to get these things up to speed and up to running. Um, there's a lot of good sleds out there for sale. Um, let me know in the comments if there's something you guys want me to go over. Or if you want me to you know, go find a sled on Facebook and kind of go through it and see what I'd look for on a sled, drop us a comment on any of our pages, um, ERX Motor Park or mine personally. Make sure you're up to speed on the rule book. There's not many major changes this year. So uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Ditch Bangers coming February 11th. Um, yeah, if you got any questions, comments, um, put them down below. We'll make sure we uh, are keeping an eye out for them. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you out at ERX. Oh man, PB and J, I'm gonna say that's my go to for a ditch banger. You know, it's you got a little sugars and peanut butters and stuff in there to keep you going, but at the same time you are not eating like a chili cheese dog and gonna be getting heartburn and you know, 'cause ditch banger it's not these young kids, it's these old guys out there that get heartburn and yeah, you don't want it. Don't don't be eating chili cheese dogs. You know, I wouldn't eat a steak before I eat like a twenty four ounce, you know top sirloin or nothing. Keep it light. PB&Js, that's where it's at. I'm making a video!